Um, what are, what are the things I find really interesting about Tolkien is that you've got this, you know, the, with the fandom, you've got this huge pop culture side, you know, where where there's just this general awareness and love of, you know, obviously the Peter Jackson <laughs> films came along and, and, you know, probably boosted that quite a bit. Um, but you've always had this, this, you know, pop culture side, and then you've got this genuine academic study side and it's really unique. I, I don't know of anything else that has, has, uh, you know, reached the heights that it has, that Tolkien has in both of those categories. Well, I, I got to say, I don't quite agree with you there because uh, I'm very conscious that, um, when I got into the business, you know, whenever it was hundreds of years ago, um, uh, uh, mentioning Tolkien was uh, academic suicide. Mm. Um, you were immediately regarded as frivolous and ridiculous. Um, yeah, quite a lot of things are academic suicide. Uh, I still think, do, do you know, my, uh, my director of studies back at Queen's College, Cambridge, refused to recommend me for graduate study. He really? said I, he said he didn't think I'd got it. I thought, I'll show you. Um, <laughs> uh, and I did. Um, but uh, the reason was, of course, uh, he realized I actually read science fiction. And obviously that mm. was just you know, <laughs> not, not the kind of thing at all. I should be reading much more serious books. I read the serious books. I read science fiction too. Okay, what's the problem? Uh, well, there was a problem. And actually Tolkien got a very, very hostile reception mm. when Lord of the Rings came out. I once went down to uh, the publishers, Alan and Unwins. This is a long time ago. And they had a big folder of reviews and I turned over these reviews one after another. They were very negative. They were very negative. Lot and indeed when I wrote the Road to Middle Earth, I started off by quoting one of the stupidest of them. But actually there were so many stupid ones. It was <laughs> well not just stupid, but people who said, Oh well this isn't gonna work. This isn't gonna come off. Nobody's gonna read this. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, why did you get it wrong? Perhaps it would be a good idea to think about that. But no, uh, the academic world um, has uh, been very hostile to Tolkien. Mm. They brought out an issue of one of the journals a few years ago. I think it may have been Modern Philology, and it was essays about Tolkien, and they were all negative. Um, wow. He was, he was bad in every way. Everything was wrong about him. No, no, no. You can't be caught reading that stuff. That's what hippies do. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so, so, th uh, so this is still a problem, you're saying? It's much less of a problem than it was okay. because the matter's been decided. Yeah. Um, if uh, you think Tolkien's going to go away, well, um, <laughs> you must be crazy. Uh, so that's that. And also, of course, I, I know quite well, especially in the U.S., um, the students are customers, not in the U.K., where it's a kind of state-run enterprise but in the u.s it uh, the, the the customers decide and how do you get people to take humanities courses mm. well every time we ran short on the, on majors in the english department they'd wheel me out and i'd uh, put on a course on tolkien uh, with three graduate assistants to help me we'd get 70 students signing up for it and uh, many of those would actually decide to be humanities majors or majors in English. Uh, so uh, it was it was a surefire student attractor. Um, and of course, if you're uh, in, out in a smaller college uh, and you really got to kind of make your bones, you got to you got to draw them in. Well, teaching Tolkien's a good idea. Teaching fantasy is a good idea. Teaching science fiction is quite a good idea. So that's a rather, I don't know, not quite such a popular taste. But yes, uh, uh, the academic world has slowly been pushed and shoved uh, into uh, taking some notice of this. But a lot of the time, they don't like it much. They don't like it much. Yeah. I know when I wrote Author of the Century, Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien, Author of the Century, um, some radio show tried to get me to debate this with the <laughs> famous critic uh, Harold Bloom. And that, I was okay about that. But uh, 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 she was talking to Bloom on the phone and I was listening in and I could hear him saying, author of the century, author of the century, has the fella never heard of Marcel Proust? I thought, Actually, the fella has heard of Marcel Proust. And if you like, Professor Bloom, we can conduct this interview in French. 
I'm sure my <laughs> French is a bloody sight better than yours. Um, but anyway, no, he wouldn't talk to me. He didn't want to know. Didn't want to know. Um, so that that I think was uh, quite um, quite predictable. Um, 